Singapore dollar and the Malaysian ringgit. Two currencies that were once equal in value to each other. Today, the Singapore dollar is more than three times stronger. What has caused this disparity between the two countries that were once one? Lots of reasons have been offered to explain this phenomenon. But none have been bold enough to honestly discuss the underlying issues. We summarize the three main factors of why the Singapore dollar has vastly outshined the Malaysian ringgit with the 3P explication. Stay tuned for this short video. And if you like videos like these, hit the like and subscribe button now. Singapore, an island at the southern tip of the Malayan Peninsula. It was ejected out of Malaysia in 1965 and became independent. Being a small country with no natural resources and a small population, Singapore was told that it would not survive. Today, Singapore has the strongest economy in Southeast Asia, and its currency is the strongest in the region, consistently outshining the Malaysian ringgit by more than three times. The first P that can explain this strength is policy. Singapore has a unique policy in managing the strength of its currency. Unlike most economies, Singapore's central bank manages the exchange rate instead of the interest rate, which is allowed to float freely. This exchange rate is controlled by buying or selling Singapore dollars against a basket of international currencies of trading partners and competitors. The composition and size of this basket is a state secret, but it is probably worth several hundred billions. On the other hand, Malaysia's central bank sets the country's interest rate, and as a result, its exchange rate will rise and fall more erratically. According to how much demand there is for other major currencies of the world, a benefit of this is that the Malaysian central bank can better protect borrowers against uncertainties caused by fluctuating interest rates. But a drawback to this is that the Malaysian currency could grow very weak when demand for other currencies, like the US dollar, increases. The weaker currency would make Malaysian exports more competitive. But at the same time, prices of imported items will increase significantly. A second P that can explain the difference is population. Although Malaysia and Singapore were once one country and one people, their population and workforce have evolved very differently. Singapore controls admissions to its universities strictly by merit and ability. Factors like race don't matter for admission into institutes of higher learning. In addition to this, the Singapore government closely monitors the types of courses that are being taught at its institutes of higher learning, so that its graduates are better equipped for the economy when they leave. As such, Singapore consistently ranks among the top in international measures, like the Global Talent Competitiveness Index, coming in second internationally. And Singapore universities are among the top in world rankings. As a result of these, higher value companies such as investment funds, pharmaceutical majors, R&D centers, and software developers find it easier to establish roots in Singapore, given its well-educated population. As such, foreign investments pour into the country in larger amounts. And this provides continued demand and support for the Singapore dollar. On the other hand, Malaysia has taken on quite a different route. Admissions into its colleges and universities are regulated by ethnic quotas. It means the country's Malay students receive priority in university admissions, though they may not have scored as well as their Chinese and Indian peers. Furthermore, there is less control on the types of courses that are being taught. Universities are free to establish courses that may be popular with students, especially majors related to religious studies. 
Due to these policies, there is a brain drain of talent from Malaysia, and the workforce is less well positioned to attract higher value companies. As a result, Malaysia attracts lesser investments when compared to Singapore. This lack is seen in the traffic at the causeway connecting the two countries, which is filled with thousands of Malaysians that flock to Singapore for jobs. Given this lack of investments, there is less demand for the Malaysian ringgit. Finally, a third P that can explain the currency disparity is prudence. Singapore has one of the highest domestic savings rates in the world. It typically ranks among the top five in a list of more than 130 countries, with a national domestic savings rate of well above 50%. This means that generally, Singaporeans' households save more than they earn, and there is relatively limited net outflows of funds from the country. On the other hand, Malaysia consistently ranks lower than Singapore in terms of domestic savings rates when ranked internationally. The domestic savings rate for Malaysia hovers at about the mid-20% mark. This means that generally, Malaysians spend more than they earn, especially on imported goods and services, which leads to capital outflows. And this leads to less demand for the Malaysian ringgit. In conclusion, exchange rates are subject to an interplay of many factors, like ancillary factors such as corruption and currency speculation, and the strength of currencies of major trade partners. But specifically for Malaysia and Singapore, the major reasons can be summarized with the 3P explication. Do you have any thoughts on the Singapore dollar or the Malaysian ringgit? Do leave us your comments below and drop us a like and subscribe if you found this video useful.